Hello and you are welcome to the Four Walls. I'm Mr. Adolf. Take a look at the green board and see the lineup. On the green board, we have the classwork where we have the early childhood. I've got a vital book as well to this topic which I will review quickly. Then I'll move straight to the examination where I have a special guest to discuss early childhood extensively. After that, we go straight to grading the different sides to the issue. Thereafter is the assignment for you. Early childhood. When a child is born, he absolutely knows nothing at the instant, or so the scientists believe. This is the main reason why scientists who study the early life of every human refers to the mind as tabula rasa, that is the clean slate. That is, the mind of a newborn is completely clean. No image, no idea, no experience, no calculation. Just an empty mind. Progressively, as the child develops, that mind would begin to witness diverse circumstances and happenings, thereby developing with whatever that comes into it. When we return, I'll go straight to reviewing a book titled The Whole Child's Brain. Don't go away, I'll be right back. You're welcome back. I told you that I'm going to be reviewing a special book connected to early childhood, the book written in 2011 by neuropsychiatrist and um, family, uh, family expert. Uh, the book titled The Whole Brain Child. The Whole Brain Child explores all the problems that the child faces when growing up. And these problems, especially according to the book, is saying that any child that is facing a particular problem is because there is a missing link at the developmental stage of the child's brain. The child's brain has nothing at the earlier stage. That means the parents or the siblings' relations around society or family friends, whatever they put into the mind of that child, it's what's going to be in that mind. And that is what the mind develops with. So, if, for example, a child is being born into a very rich background, the child, you know, experiences luxury and all the luxurious cars, luxurious houses and, you know, wonderful vacation and everything, that child would grow up knowing all these things. Not like the child would not understand that there is poverty at all, but then the child will only believe in what he or she has been exposed to. So the mind of a child is very, very essential when it comes to tackling educational problems. That means the parents, in fact, entire stakeholders in education must always look carefully at the developmental stage of every individual, and that is from the basis of early childhood. With me on the program, I have um, education consultant. He's an author as well and a public speaker. Vincent Inwezerua. I'm correct, right? Thank you. You're from Edo? Yes, please. Oh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So, Vincent, early childhood, I don't know, you, you are a public speaker and author. You have a book that you wrote on um, teachers on the go. Uh, teachers on the go. Then I also understand that you are an education consultant. Yes. That means you know a lot about every aspect of education. Yes, please. Do you know the aspect of education that looks at the early childhood? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on this show. You're welcome. Um, early childhood education is. Um, that branch of education that relates to how we groom and uh, teach children from birth to about five, six, eight years old. And it's a very, very critical stage of the human life because uh, the 90% of the development of the child's life is concentrated at that period. Um, as John Drescher said, um, a child psychologist, um, that stage 
is the period of regulation. And the child acquires 90% of the development of his her brain at that stage. So um, the early childhood is very, very critical to the entire development of that of the, child. Yes. I understand also that the early childhood begins with the parent's involvement in that child's life. Tell me what the parents are expected to do at that early stage of infancy. Okay, so um, we have a school of thought, uh, the behaviorists. Um, their philosophy is that um, the character and the eventual destiny of the child is based on the impact of the environment. So uh, Emilio Regilia is a foremost uh, personality in that field. And uh, they say that the environment contributes massively to what the child becomes. And when you talk about the environment, of course, the mother and every other person that surrounds the child as soon as he or she, she arrives here. So um, the impact of the environment cannot be downplayed. And f the first contact of the child is with the parents, the mother and the father. So they play a major role because, like you said during your introduction, tabula rasa. So the play mind the child comes in, comes with, needs some things to be put. And um, it's the parents who put that, the, mo the, the, the words the mother speaks to the child, um, the uh, the, the, the environment created generally around the child by the parents. So that goes a long way to, you know, uh, impact on what becomes of the child. So that's where early childhood actually begins. Uh, the ed early childhood education, the informal setting informal before setting. the child progresses to the, to the formal, formal setting. setting. I also know that some children, when they are developing, in as much as the parents might try to inculcate certain values, you will find that, that, for example, a parent that are not stubborn at all might have a child that is stubborn. Then they will keep this teaching that child, you know, from being stubborn to being normal and ac acceptable and everything. Then progressively that child grows into being stubborn and stubborn. Why is that? Okay, so like, we, like I said, um, talking about the Emilio Regilia School of Thought, uh, the environment is not limited to the parents. So in as much as they play a major role, um, there are other influences, influences and voices that the child hears, you know, outside the home. Of course, the child, we cannot separate uh, the, we cannot separate two factors I would like to mention. I mentioned environment, we'll mention heredity. But the child has to leave the home at one point or the other and somehow gets, you know, influenced by the society. The school environment is also a place where the child begins to imbibe, you know, um, strange yes, traits and all of that. So it, 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 in as much as, yes, the parents will have impact on what becomes of the child, um, the environment extends beyond the four walls of the home. Okay. So the child goes to the school, sees other children, sees their behavior, sees, you know, um, the way they behave, and, you know, begins to form um, a way of life. Having said that, we must also not put totally, yes, tabula rasa, the mind is plain, but there is also a school of thought that tells us that the child comes actually fully made. Fully made, how? Yes, that, um, so by the time the child arrives here, uh, the brain is 90% formed. Okay, so, um, and the child has, um, a temperament of his own that may be, or her own, that may be, that may not necessarily have to uh, to the path of the parents. So um, the child has a temperament, will come naturally with, he, with his own temperament. Of course, you know the different temperaments, you know, in psychology. So whereas the mother might be, you know, a sanguine, the child, be, you know, comes as a melancholy. 
the environment impacts on the child, no doubt. The mother impacts on the child, no doubt. But that school of thought tells us that the child has his or her own make. make. So if we will also go with that, um, there, in as much as the parents would impact on the child, the child has his own make. And of course, they can only help to modify okay. to some extent. It's, <laughs> I like the idea to some extent. Yes. Now, let's look at the school. The school is like where the child begins to get the first formal experience of education. Yes. How prepared are most of the schools for this early childhood? Okay, so um, that's a very important question because um, the sad thing is that um, it, it, there are a lot of schools who claim in Nigeria who claim to uh, run early childhood education, but uh, we, they do not have the the kind the, the 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 kind of instructors that are you know uh, good enough to run the classes to run with the children. A lot of experience is required. Take for instance. Uh, a carpenter. So a carpenter should not just limit his knowledge to sawing, planing, and um, polishing the wood. The carpenter needs to understand how each wood behaves. He needs to understand that we have different kinds of woods. So, and how, and that will inform how he relates with them. So teaching skills are not just enough for a teacher who is in the early childhood section. The, 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 the teacher needs to understand the child, needs to understand the uniqueness of the child so they can understand how you know, to uh, communicate n knowledge in this sense, or information to the child. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people in, this, um, in the environment, in the teaching environment, early childhood particularly, who are there they have teaching skills, but they do not understand the peculiarities of, you know, early, early child, child edu education. You said, early child education. You said a teacher needs to understand the child. Yes. Of course, you can have only one child in a class. Probably there might be 20 or 15 or less than that in the class. Are you suggesting that a teacher would understand each and every child? How complex is that? Um... The proof of teacher's competence is in the ability to define every child in the class. Um, professor Howard Gardner, uh, um, professor of education at um, one of the universities in America, in the United States of America, uh, came with um, what we call individualized learning. And um, the idea he propounded is that every child has a unique way of learning. You don't teach, you don't necessarily need to teach a fish to climb a tree. You don't necessarily, you don't need to teach a, an eagle to swim. An eagle is unique in its, on its own, and the same applies to the fish. So, um, the teacher must understand every child in their class because they are unique in their own way. When we went to school, our teachers stood in front of the class. That's the colonial approach. Stood in front of the class, taught everybody, and of course, the ta I mean, it was the repository of knowledge, and mm -hmm. everybody, whatever he said was final. final. But in the 21st century, particularly with um, uh, toddlers, children b between the ages of three, five, six. Uh, the, the teacher must understand, like I said, that the, the school of thought that says that every child has his own mind, every child is unique in their own way. The teachers must understand how they learn. So we have, like Howard Gardner said, we have the visual learners. So we, 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 we have those who learn by what they see. We'll, we have the physical learners. We have, I have that in my, you know, um, in my book, the Teachers on the Go, where the teacher needs to learn how each child learns. So the teacher will not have, the child will not learn the way the teacher teaches. 
the teacher, the teacher has to teach the way the child learns. At this point where the teacher needs to learn how to teach a child, and I, like I said, we don't have only one child, we have several children with different attitudes, different character, and different pace of learning. What about the facilities like the teaching aids that are required? What sort of teaching aids? Because I've been around some of these toddlers in the class. I saw a lot of colors. I saw a lot of paintings. And some are singing to a music that I don't even understand and all of that. Are these the things that are necessary for that age? So when we're talking about um, the environment, those are parts of the things that um, inspire the child. Okay, so for in early childhood education, the purpose of sending the child out of the class, uh, out of the home, the four walls of the home to the school is because you need professionals to help the child learn in a better way. And they need to, they will help create an environment that is stimulating. They will help the child apply knowledge because the, the toddler wants to explore his world. And it's most of the time, the things he see, the things he can explore with and all of that. So uh, the importance of learning materials, learning aids cannot be overemphasized because the child needs to relate with materials. Um, it needs to touch. Some of these materials are like toys. Yes. For instance, in Montessori, so you have the spindle box, you have the red rod, you have the uh, brown uh, brown stairs, you have, oh, you, you know. You even have the aeroplane <laughs> as a toy. So all of these, the um, in a way, the, the child needs to develop his uh, tactile skill. skill how, as he handles things, he under, he's able what did to... What you call that? Tactile skill. What is that? S skill. That's the ability to hold things. Okay. Or what you, you, you may want to say motor skills. Okay. Um, so, you see some adults today, when they grip their pen, they grip it in a funny way. It's oh. because you, you, they were not... You, you, the, the, the privilege, the early education, I mean, early education affords you is that it's, it speeds you into the future. So the child begins to hold some of these Montessori materials or other materials that they are using in the classroom, and he, he begins to develop his motor skills. He handles the thermal box, which is to help him see, I mean, to feel objects, oh. hot objects, cold objects, he, uh, the smelly jar, you know, he's able to pass, you know, and event. that way, the neurons of the brain, I mean, the dendrites are developing. Within the first five years of a child's life, the neurons are, they, they, they are almost fully developed. Millions of them, you know, are, are, can be maximized. By the time a child is 10 years, the rate of development and growth of the dendrites of the brain are reduced. So that's why, really? yes. So that's why it's very, I mean, that formative part of the life the f um, before five is very, very critical. And of course, materials that need to be used to teach them, or a school of thought will say, you don't teach them, you guide them. Yes, those materials must be made available. All right. The, the, the child, for example, in the 70s, when we do not have all of these um, ideas for educating the early childhood, most of these children from the 70s have grown into becoming big engineers and big lawyers. They've reached their, almost their maximum, you know. But we are saying that these are the things that would help the child, you know, achieve the full potential. Why was it not then and yet the children of that age and time were able to achieve all they've been able to achieve? We cannot um, use uh, the curriculum that was used to teach their grandparents or guide their grandparents to teach them because the world keeps changing. Every four minutes, information is changing. Information is increasing. Um, we, in the 70s, we won't sit in a kind of studio like this, but the world is moving. 
And of course, we must continue to move with what is going on in, uh, you know, across the globe. Um, you, you, today you have young stars in their twenties, even teenagers who are millionaires. In the seventies, that was rare. Absolutely rare. So, um, we must understand that we have developments and things are changing. So the, the rate at which children acquire information, there are things that my children know today that I'm surprised they know because when I was like them, I could I did not have such access, informa to, access such. to such information. Technology, a lot of things are changing, a lot of things are moving around us. And of course, we must keep moving you know, with the world. What do you say about government? Government schools, for example, are not as equipped or are not as facilitated as the private schools that we have, especially in Nigeria. What do you say about government not doing much, like they say, about the early childhood education? Um, let me go broadly first, and then I will narrow it down to early childhood education. That does not only apply to, um, does not only apply to early childhood education. Fortunately, government's attitude towards education in Nigeria uh, has not been very encouraging, you know, um, and that needs to improve. It needs to improve. Um, and that's why you see that education seems to be the sector that comes last. Whenever any development comes up in the world, as far as Nigeria is concerned or Africa is concerned, so you see the banking, the financial sector, you know, uh, when there is any development in the world, the banking sector quickly aligns, the medical sector aligns, I mean, medicine aligns, every sector aligns. It takes a while before education. is being remembered at all. Yes. Uh, and unfortunately, not so much is coming from the government in re uh, regards to Encouraging and mo motivating uh, the uh, yes, system. so there's so much government has to do. But come down to um, early childhood education. If you go to public schools today, uh, sadly, some of I mean government officers can go to private schools to check them and see how they're doing. A lot of these private schools have facilities that are not in public schools. Pub public officers or government officers come and sanction them. But you go to public schools and you see that a lot of the public schools around us do not even have half or a quarter of what you can see. Do you really see um, early child, I mean, nursery schools? Maybe in, in, in some of the public schools, a few of them, but then do we have competence? Even when you see them, they, they are in the Deplorable states. Deplorable states, no facilities, you don't have competent hands, and, you know, it's a sad, it's a sad one. Uh, this discussion will not end on this particular episode because it is as real as I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. The early childhood education is very vital, but how serious are we taking it? When we come back after the short break, we will go straight to our grading which will lead us to the excitement. Don't go away, I'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's go straight to our grading. Let's see what um, Vincent is going to give to the parents, the school, and the government. Like I told you earlier, the grading is A for excellence, C for fair, and F for terrible. So what do you give to the parents in Nigeria concerning early childhood education? Early childhood education for parents, I will give fair. Fair, why? Well, because um, many years ago, you, we didn't have so many toddlers going to school. It was seen as not necessary. Not necessary. But these days, a lot of people want to, you know, put their children, they, they're beginning to understand the essence of early childhood education. All right. So, so what do you give to schools in terms of facilities and teachers, well-trained teachers? I will also give fair because I'm bringing all the schools together. 
So and we, you know, we have schools in different categories. Um, we have those who are doing very well, and we have those who are still trying to come up there. So I'll put everything in a fair. Then the government, with their policy, the funding, the creativity required for early childhood education. Let me also give fair, and I will give you, <laughs> I'll give you the reason. Okay. Okay. Um, so I was in the United Kingdom in 2009, University of Nottingham, for a program, um, a, a, an education program. And we, we went visiting schools and uh, discussing with uh, uh, school principals. And one of the things we discovered was that school curriculums are reviewed every two years in the every United two Kingdom. Years. As at then, 2009, the last time the Nigerian curriculum was reviewed was in two, it was in 1979. 1979 to 2009, that's, that's like 30 years. 30 years. So you can understand why we have the gap. However, we, I mean, we would we, we, we'll be grateful to the likes of the obvious equities of this world, what they you know, came to do when she became the Minister of Education. Since then, we've noticed There's improvement. A little improvement. So I will give fair. Fair to the federal government of Nigeria on early childhood education. So let's give you the assignment right away. The assignment is, what is your earliest memory as a child? Go to Facebook, um, four walls on Facebook, and put your answer there. What is your earliest memory as a child? Thank you so much, Vincent Inwezerua. Yes. Forgive me that I have to pronounce your name slowly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank God you. bless you.